Hello friends. Jin here today with an important message for you. A message that I believe will help you turn your life around. In today's message, we will be discussing the topic of goal setting. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've heard it all before. That goals work hard and you'll achieve success. But the reality is, many of us struggle with setting and achieving our goals. We start off with great intentions, but somewhere along the way, we lose steam and end up back at square one. If this sounds familiar to you, then you are not alone. In fact, millions of people struggle with goal setting and fail to achieve their desired outcomes. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you can turn things around. I will be sharing with you the top five reasons why you keep failing at goal setting and how to overcome them. These are the same principles that have helped me and countless others achieve success in our personal and professional lives. So get ready to take notes, and let's dive into the five reasons why you keep failing at goal setting. Number five is unrealistic expectation. When goal setting, we live in a world where we are constantly bombarded with messages of instant gratification and overnight success. We see people on social media living seemingly perfect lives achieving great success and wealth in a short amount of time. And it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we too can achieve our goals just as quickly and easily. But the truth is, these unrealistic expectations can be detrimental to our personal growth and success. When they ask you this, have you ever set a goal for yourself and felt disappointed or discouraged when you didn't achieve it as quickly as you had hoped? Have you ever compared your progress to someone else's and felt like you were falling behind? I know I have, and it's because we have been conditioned to believe that success is a straight line, a quick and easy journey. But the reality is, success is a winding road full of ups and downs, and it takes time and effort to reach our goals. We must understand that setting unrealistic expectations for ourselves is setting ourselves up for failure. It's like trying to run a marathon without training for it. We may have the desire and determination, but without proper preparation and realistic expectations, we will not reach the finish line. So, what can we do to avoid these unrealistic expectations when goal setting? The first step is to understand that success is a process, not an event. It's not something that happens overnight, but rather a journey that requires patience, persistence, and hard work. We must be willing to put in the time and effort to achieve our goals and not expect instant results. Next, we must be honest with ourselves about our capabilities and limitations. It's important to set goals that are challenging yet attainable. If we set goals that are too high, we may become overwhelmed and give up. On the other hand, if we set goals that are too low, we may not push ourselves to reach our full potential. It's about finding the balance and setting realistic expectations for ourselves. Another key factor in avoiding unrealistic expectations is to focus on progress, not perfection. We are human and we will make mistakes along the way. But instead of beating ourselves up for not being perfect, we must celebrate our progress and use our mistakes as learning opportunities. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes time to achieve greatness, and we must be patient with ourselves. Furthermore, we must let go of the comparison game. It's easy to look at someone else's success and feel like we are not doing enough. But the truth is, everyone's journey is different. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses, and we must focus on our own progress and not compare it to others. As Theodore Roosevelt once said, comparison is the thief of joy. Let's not allow comparison to steal our joy and motivation. Lastly, we must have a positive mindset. Our thoughts and beliefs have a powerful impact on our actions and ultimately our results. If we constantly doubt ourselves and our abilities, we will never reach our full potential. We must believe in ourselves and our goals and have faith that we can achieve them. As Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Number four is the lack of commitment. You see, commitment is the foundation of success. Without it, your dreams and goals will remain just that, dreams and goals. It is the fuel that drives us toward our desired destination. And yet, so many of us struggle with it. Why is that? 
Why is it that we struggle to stay committed to our goals and aspirations? The answer is simple. It's hard. It's not easy to stay committed, especially when faced with obstacles and challenges. But here's the thing. Anything worth having is never easy. If it were, everyone would have it. But let me tell you something. The road to success is not meant to be easy. It is meant to test you, to push you to your limits, and to make you stronger. And it is in those moments of struggle that your commitment is truly tested. It is easy to stay committed when everything is going smoothly. But it is during the tough times that your commitment truly shines. So how do we overcome this lack of commitment? How do we stay committed to our goals and dreams even when faced with challenges? The first step is to have a clear vision. You must know exactly what it is that you want to achieve. Without a clear vision, your commitment will waver, and you will easily be swayed by distractions and obstacles. Once you have a clear vision, the next step is to set specific and achievable goals. These goals should be challenging enough to push you, but also realistic enough for you to believe that you can achieve them. Write them down, make them tangible, and hold yourself accountable for them. But here's the thing. Setting goals is not enough. You must also have a plan of action. How will you achieve these goals? What steps do you need to take? What resources do you need? Having a plan will not only keep you on track, but it will also give you a sense of direction and purpose. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I've tried all of that, and I still struggle with commitment. Well, my friends, it's time to change your mindset. You see, commitment is not something that you have. It is something that you do. It is a daily choice that you make, a commitment to yourself and your goals. And let me tell you something. Commitment is not always easy. There will be days when you don't feel like doing the work, when you want to give up, when you doubt yourself. But it is during these moments that you must remind yourself of your why. Why did you set these goals in the first class? What is your ultimate vision? And most importantly, what will happen if you give up? You see, the pain of regret is far greater than the pain of discipline. And I can guarantee you, if you give up on your goals and dreams, you will regret it for the rest of your life. But if you stay committed, if you push through the tough times, if you keep moving forward, the rewards will be far greater than you can ever imagine. But here's the thing. Commitment is not just about achieving your goals. It's about personal growth and development. It's about becoming the best version of yourself. And let me tell you something. The journey toward success is just as important as the destination. As you work toward your goals, you will face challenges, you will make mistakes, and you will learn valuable lessons. Embrace these moments because they are what will shape you into the person you are meant to be. Number three is not having a plan when goal setting, or more specifically, the consequences of not having a plan when it comes to goal setting. As I stand here today, I'm reminded of a quote by Antoine de saint exupéry A goal without a plan is just a wish. How many of us have goals and dreams that we have yet to achieve? How many of us have made resolutions at the beginning of the year, only to find ourselves in the same place at the end of it? I believe that one of the reasons for this is the lack of a proper plan. You see, setting goals is easy. We all have dreams and desires that we want to achieve. However, it is the execution of those goals that separates the successful from the unsuccessful. And a crucial part of execution is having a plan. Let me give you an example. Imagine you want to build a house. You have a vision of what you want it to look like, the number of rooms, the color scheme, and the location. But if you don't have a blueprint or a plan, how will you bring that vision to life? How will you know where to start, what materials to use, and how long it will take? It's the same with our goals. Without a plan, we are just wandering aimlessly, hoping to stumble upon success. Now, some of you may argue that having a plan is too restrictive, that it takes away the spontaneity and excitement of life. But let me tell you this. A plan is not meant to be rigid. It is meant to be a guide, a roadmap that will lead you to your desired destination. And just like in GPS, it can be adjusted and recalibrated as needed. Having a plan when goal setting is not about restricting yourself. It's about giving yourself direction and purpose.
It's about taking control of your life and making intentional choices that will lead you to where you want to be. But what happens when we don't have a plan? When we approach our goals haphazardly without any direction or strategy? Well, the first consequence is that we waste time. Time is our most valuable asset and we cannot afford to waste it. Without a plan, we find ourselves going around in circles, trying different things but never making any real progress. And before we know it, another year has passed, and we are no closer to our goals. The second consequence of not having a plan is that we become easily distracted. We live in a world where distractions are everywhere, social media, Netflix, and endless notification. Without a plan, we are more likely to give in to these distractions and lose focus on what truly matters to us. We become reactive instead of proactive, letting external factors dictate our actions rather than our own intention. And the third consequence is that we become demotivated. When we don't see any progress towards our goals, we start to doubt ourselves and our abilities. We start to question if our dreams are even achievable. And this demotivation can lead to giving up on our goals altogether. But my friends, it doesn't have to be this way. It's not too late to turn things around. It's not too late to start making progress towards your goals. And it all starts with having a plan. So, how do we create a plan for our goals? The first step is to get clear on what you want. You cannot create a plan if you don't know what you're aiming for. Take some time to reflect on your goals and write them down. Be specific and make sure they align with your values and passions. The second step is to break down your goals into smaller, manageable tasks. This will make them less overwhelming and more achievable. Think of it as climbing a mountain. You don't start at the top. You take one step at a time. The third step is to set a timeline for each task. This will give you a sense of urgency and help you stay on track. But it's also essential to be realistic with your timeline and allow for some flexibility. Remember, a plan is not set in stone. And finally, the last step is to take action. A plan is useless if you don't act on it. It's like having a mat but not moving your feet. So make a commitment to yourself to take consistent action towards your goals. Then don't be afraid to adjust your plan as needed. Life is unpredictable and sometimes we have to adapt to new circumstances. With number two, I want to address a common obstacle that many of us face when setting goals. The fear of failure. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had a dream, a goal, a burning desire in your heart, but the thought of failing stopped you from even attempting to pursue it? Have you ever let the fear of failure hold you back from reaching your full potential? If you answered yes, then you are not alone. Fear of failure is a common struggle that we all face, but it is up to us to overcome it. You see, fear of failure is not something that we are born with. It is something that we learn along the way. As children, we are fearless. We try new things without hesitation. We fall and get back up. We dream big and believe that anything is possible. But as we grow older, we are conditioned to fear failure. We are taught to avoid risks and stick to what is safe and comfortable. We are bombarded with messages that failure is something to be ashamed of, something to be avoided at all costs. But let me tell you this. Failure is not the enemy. In fact, failure is a necessary part of success. It is through our failures that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. Think about it. Every successful person you admire has experienced failure. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking creativity and imagination. Oprah Winfrey was told she was unfit for television. Steve Jobs was fired from the company he co-founded. But did they let their failures define them? No, they used them as stepping stones to their success. So why do we fear failure so much? It is because we attach our self-worth to our achievements. We believe that if we fail, we are failures. But let me tell you this. Failure is an event, not a person. Just because you failed at something does not mean that you are a failure. It simply means that you have not yet succeeded. And the only way to succeed is to keep trying, to keep pushing through the fear of failure. Now, I'm not saying that failure is easy to deal with. It can be devastating, it can be demoralizing, 
It can even be embarrassing. But it is in those moments of failure that our character is truly tested. It is in those moments that we have a choice. To let failure defeat us or to use it as a stepping stone to success. So, how do we overcome the fear of failure when setting goals? The first step is to reframe our mindset. Instead of viewing failure as something to be avoided, view it as a learning opportunity. Embrace the idea that failure is a necessary part of the journey towards success. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. The second step is to set realistic expectations. Many times, we set ourselves up for failure by setting unrealistic goals. This does not mean that we should not dream big, but we should also break down our goals into smaller, achievable steps. This way, even if we do not reach our ultimate goal, we can still celebrate the progress we have made. The third step is to have a growth mindset. Instead of focusing on the outcome, focus on the process. See each failure as an opportunity to learn and grow. As long as you are making progress, you are moving in the right direction. The fourth step is to surround yourself with a supportive network. We become like the people we spend the most time with. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, who encourage you, and who will pick you up when you fall. And remember, it is not about the number of people in your network. It is about the quality of those relationships. And the fifth and final step is to take action. As the saying goes, action cures fear. The longer we wait, the more our fear of failure grows. So take that first step, no matter how small it may seem. And when you do fail, and you will, do not let it stop you from taking the next step. With number one, I want to address a crucial topic that often gets overlooked. The lack of accountability when it comes to goal setting. We live in a world where everyone wants success, but very few are willing to take responsibility for their action. We have become a society of excuses, blaming others and external factors for our failures. We have lost sight of the power of accountability, and it is hindering our growth and potential. Accountability is the foundation of success. It is the willingness to take ownership of our choices, actions, and results. It is the understanding that we are in control of our lives and that our decisions shape our future. Without accountability, we are like ships without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. But why is accountability so crucial when it comes to goal setting? Let me tell you a story. Imagine two individuals, John and Sarah, both with the same goal of losing 20 pounds. John sets a goal to lose 20 pounds in three months and holds himself accountable. Creates a plan, tracks his progress, and makes necessary adjustments along the way. Sarah, on the other hand, sets the same goal but does not hold herself accountable. She makes excuses, skips workouts, and indulges in unhealthy food choices. After three months, John has successfully lost 20 pounds, while Sarah has only lost 5 pounds. What made the difference? Accountability. John took responsibility for his actions and stayed committed to his goal, while Sarah let excuses and lack of accountability stand in her way. Now, let me ask you, who do you think will feel a sense of accomplishment in trying? Who will have more confidence and motivation to set and achieve more significant goals? It is evident that accountability is the key to success. So how can we cultivate accountability in our lives? The first step is to take ownership of our choices. We must stop making excuses and blaming others for our failures. It is time to take a hard look in the mirror and acknowledge that our decisions have led us to where we are today. When we take responsibility for our action, we gain the power to change our circumstances. The next step is to set clear and specific goals. Without a clear destination, we cannot hold ourselves accountable for our progress. When setting goals, be specific about what you want to achieve. Create a plan and set a timeline. This will give you a roadmap to follow and track your progress. But setting goals and taking ownership is not enough. We must also have the courage to hold ourselves accountable. It takes courage to admit when we have fallen short of our expectations. It takes courage to admit our mistakes and make necessary changes. 
but it is this courage that will push us to grow and achieve our goals. Another crucial aspect of accountability is having a support system. We all need someone who will hold us accountable and push us to be our best selves. It can be a friend, a mentor, or a coach. Having someone to share our goals and progress with can provide us with the motivation and encouragement we need to stay on track. Now, I understand that accountability can be intimidating. It means taking responsibility for our failures and admitting when they have fallen short. But let me tell you, the rewards of accountability far outweigh the fear. When we hold ourselves accountable, we become the masters of our destiny. We gain control of our lives and have the power to shape our future. Accountability also builds character and integrity. When we take responsibility for our actions, we become trustworthy and reliable individuals. We become leaders who inspire and motivate others to take charge of their lives. But most importantly, accountability leads to success. When we hold ourselves accountable, we become unstoppable. We are no longer held back by excuses and external factors. We become focused and determined to achieve our goals, and nothing can stand in our way. So, my friends, as we continue on our journey of personal development, I urge you to cultivate accountability in your lives. Take ownership of your choices, set clear and specific goals, have the courage to hold yourself accountable, surround yourself with a supportive network. Remember, accountability is the key to success, and it is within each and every one of us to unlock its power. In part two of this series, we will dive deeper into personal development and how it ties into accountability. But for now, I leave you with this quote by the great Zig Ziglar. Accountability is the glue that ties commitment to the result. So let us all commit to being accountable for our goals and watch as we achieve success beyond our wildest dreams. Thank you. I believe that the way we start our morning sets the tone for the rest of our day. If we can transform our mornings, we can transform our entire lives. In today's message, I want to share with you five keys to transforming your mornings. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mornings can be tough. Waking up early, rushing to get ready, dealing with traffic or a busy schedule. It can all feel overwhelming. But I want you to know that you are not alone. We have all been there, struggling to find a sense of balance and purpose in our mornings. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you're taking the first step towards turning things around. You're taking control of your mornings and, ultimately, your life. These five keys that I will be sharing with you today have been tried and tested by myself and countless others. I can guarantee that they will make a positive impact on your daily routine. By the end of this message, you will have the tools and knowledge to transform your mornings and set yourself up for success. So let's dive in and make the most out of every single day. Starting with number five, which is transforming your mornings by focusing on self-care. When we talk about self-care, many of you may think of indulging in luxurious spa treatments or taking a day off from work. While those things are certainly enjoyable, self-care goes much deeper than that. It is about taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. It is about making a conscious effort to prioritize our own needs and well-being. So why is self-care so crucial, especially in the mornings? Well, when they ask you this, how many of you wake up feeling refreshed, energized, and ready to conquer the day? I'm sure not many of you can say yes to that. And that is because we often neglect ourselves in the morning rush. We jump out of bed, check our phones, rush to get dressed, and head out the door without even taking a moment to breathe and focus on ourselves. But here's the thing. How we start our morning sets the tone for the entire day. If we wake up feeling stressed, rushed, and overwhelmed, that is how our day will continue. On the other hand, if we start our day with self-care, we will feel more relaxed, focused, and ready to tackle any challenges that come our way. So how can we incorporate self-care into our morning routine? Well, it all starts with the night before. A good night's sleep is crucial for our physical and mental well-being. Make sure to get at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep and try to establish a consistent sleep schedule. This will help you wake up feeling refreshed and energized. 
Next, take a few moments to set your intentions for the next day. Write down your goals, tasks, and priorities for the day ahead. This will help you stay focused and motivated throughout the day. Now, when you wake up in the morning, resist the urge to check your phone or emails right away. Instead, take a few deep breaths and practice gratitude. Think about all the things you are grateful for in your life. This will help you start your day with a positive mindset. Next, it's time to nourish your body. Make sure to have a healthy breakfast, drink plenty of water, and maybe even do some light stretching or exercise. Taking care of our physical health is essential for our overall well-being. But self-care is not just about our physical health. It's also about our mental and emotional health. Take a few moments to do something that brings you joy, whether it's reading a book, listening to music, or practicing a hobby. This will help you start your day feeling more fulfilled and happy. And finally, before you head out the door, take a few moments to practice self-care in the form of self-affirmations. Look at yourself in the mirror and say positive affirmations such as, I am capable, I am worthy, I am enough. This will help boost your self-confidence and set a positive tone for your day. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. I don't have time for all of this in the morning. But here's the thing. We make time for what is important to us, and taking care of ourselves should be a top priority. Remember, we cannot pour from an empty cup. We must take care of ourselves first before we can take care of others. Incorporating self-care into our morning routine may seem like a small change, but it can make a significant impact on our lives. Not only will it help us start our day feeling more relaxed and focused, but it will also improve our overall well-being in the long run. Which leads us to number four, transforming your mornings by practicing gratitude. So why is gratitude so important? Have you ever woken up feeling stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed? I'm sure we all have. Then what do we usually do in those situations? We start our day by checking our phones, scrolling through social media, then bombarding ourselves with even more information and distractions. But what if I told you that by simply practicing gratitude in the morning, it can change the entire course of your day? Gratitude is a powerful emotion that has the ability to shift our perspective and mindset. When we start our day by focusing on the things we are grateful for, we set ourselves out for a positive and productive day. So how can we practice gratitude in the morning? It's simple. The first thing you can do is start a gratitude journal. Every morning before you even get out of bed, take a few minutes to write down three things you are grateful for. It can be as simple as having a roof over your head, a loving family, or even the fact that you woke up today. By doing this, you're setting your intentions for the day and starting off on a positive note. Another way to practice gratitude in the morning is for meditation. Take a few minutes to sit in silence and focus on all the things you are grateful for. This will not only help you feel more centered and calm, but it will also allow you to start your day with a grateful heart. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, my mornings are so hectic. I don't have time for all this. And my response to that is, you don't have time not to do it. By taking just a few minutes to practice gratitude in the morning, you're setting yourself up for a more productive and fulfilling day. And let's be honest. We all have a few minutes to spare in the morning. Instead of hitting the snooze button or scrolling through social media, is that time to focus on gratitude. But it's not just about practicing gratitude in the morning. It's about making it a part of your daily routine. Throughout the day, take a moment to pause and reflect on all the things you are grateful for. It could be something as small as a kind gesture from a stranger or something as big as a promotion at work. By constantly reminding ourselves of the good in our lives, we are training our minds to have a more positive outlook. Now, I want to challenge you all to take it a step further. Instead of just focusing on the things you are grateful for, also focus on the people you are grateful for. Take a moment to express your gratitude to someone who has had a positive impact on your life. It could be a friend, a family member, a mentor, or even a colleague. By spreading gratitude, we not only make someone else's day better, but we also strengthen our relationships and create a ripple effect of positivity. 
Which leads us to number three, transforming your warnings by planning ahead. Planning ahead is a crucial step in achieving success in any aspect of our lives. It allows us to be intentional with our time and energy, and it sets us up for success. But let me share with you three key steps to planning ahead for a successful morning. The first step is to set a goal for your morning. What do you want to accomplish in the morning? Is it exercising, reading, or spending time with your loved ones? Whatever it may be, write it down and make it a priority. Setting a goal gives us a sense of direction and purpose for our mornings. It motivates us to wake up early and start our day with intention. The second step is to create a plan. Once you have your goal in mind, it's time to create a plan to achieve it. For example, if your goal is to exercise in the morning, plan out what time you will wake up, what exercises you will do, and for how long. Having a plan in place eliminates any guesswork and allows us to be more efficient with our time. The third and final step is to visualize your morning routine. Visualization is a powerful tool that helps us manifest our desires. Take a few moments before going to bed to visualize yourself waking up early, feeling energized, and accomplishing your goal for the morning. This not only sets our mind in the right direction, but also helps us wake up with a sense of purpose and motivation. Now, you may be thinking, but Jim, I am not a morning person. I struggle to wake up early. Trust me, I understand. I used to be the same way. But let me tell you, waking up early and planning ahead can transform your life. It gives you a head start on the day, and you will be amazed at how much you can accomplish in the morning when you have a plan in place. I want to share with you a quote by Benjamin Franklin. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. This quote holds so much truth. When we wake up early, we have more time to take care of ourselves, our goals, and our relationships. We have more time to invest in our personal growth, which ultimately leads to success in all areas of our lives. Now, I understand that life can be unpredictable and there may be days where our morning routine gets disrupted. But that's okay. The key is to not let one bad morning throw off the rest of your day or week. Instead, use that opportunity to practice resilience and adaptability. Remember, success is not about being perfect every day, but rather consistently making an effort to improve and grow. Which leads us to number two, transforming your mornings by getting enough sleep. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Jim, how can sleep possibly have an impact on our mornings? Well, when they tell you, my friends, sleep is not just a state of rest for our bodies. It is also a crucial factor in our overall well-being and success. Think about it. Have you ever woken up after a good night's sleep feeling refreshed, energized, and ready to take on the day? I'm sure you have. And on the other hand, have you ever had a night of tossing and turning, only to wake up feeling groggy, irritable, and unmotivated? I'm sure we've all been there. The quality and quantity of our sleep directly affect our physical, mental, and emotional state, which ultimately impacts our productivity and success. Now, I understand that in this fast-paced world, sleep is often seen as a luxury. We are bombarded with work responsibilities and distractions that make it difficult to prioritize our sleep. But let me tell you, neglecting our sleep is a grave mistake. It not only affects our mornings but also our entire day and eventually our overall well-being. So how can we ensure that we get enough sleep and transform our mornings? The first step is to understand the importance of sleep. As I mentioned earlier, sleep is not just a state of rest but it is a vital process that allows our bodies and minds to repair and rejuvenate. It is during sleep that our bodies heal, our memories are consolidated, and our minds process and store information. Without adequate sleep, our bodies and minds cannot function at their best. The second step is to prioritize our sleep. I know it can be tempting to stay up late to finish that last episode of your favorite show or to scroll for social media. But we must understand that our sleep is not negotiable. We must make a conscious effort to set a bedtime and stick to it. Just like we schedule our meetings and appointments, we must schedule our sleep. The third step is to create a sleep-friendly environment. 
Our bedroom should be a sanctuary for sleep. It should be dark, quiet, and cool. The use of electronic devices before bedtime should also be limited, as the blue light emitted from them can disrupt our sleep patterns. Instead, try reading a book or practicing relaxation techniques before bed to help you wind down. The fourth step is to establish a bedtime routine. Just like how we have a morning routine, a bedtime routine can help signal our bodies that it is time to sleep. It can include activities such as taking a warm bath, listening to calming music, or practicing gratitude. Find what works for you and stick to it. Now, I understand that changing our habits and routines could be challenging, especially when it comes to sleep. But let me tell you, my friends, the benefits of getting enough sleep are worth it. Not only will you wake up feeling refreshed and energized, but you will also have improved focus, memory, and mood. And most importantly, you will be able to start your day with a positive attitude, which we all know is the number one way to transform our mornings. Which leads us to number one, transforming your mornings by creating a morning routine. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, a morning routine. That sounds boring and mundane, but let me tell you, my friends, a morning routine is anything but ordinary. In fact, it is the foundation for a successful and fulfilling life. You see, how you start your day sets the tone for the rest of it. It is like laying the first brick in the construction of a building. If that brick is not in the right place, the entire structure will be off. Similarly, if you do not start your day on the right foot, the rest of it will be a struggle. So what exactly is a morning routine? It is a set of intentional and consistent actions that you take every morning to set yourself up for success. It is not just about waking up early or having a cup of coffee. It is about creating a ritual that nourishes your mind, body, and soul. It is about taking control of your day instead of letting the day control you. Now, I am not saying that you have to wake up at the crack of dawn or follow a strict schedule. Your morning routine should be tailored to your needs and preferences. The key is to be intentional and consistent with it. So I urge you to create a morning routine that works for you and stick to it. I promise you, it will be the best decision you ever make.